Can you just cue my audio, please? We're gonna we're gonna be playing a lot of clips here. Had some listeners send me uh, some recommendations today that I should play as much of the Lindsey Graham opening statement as I possibly can, <clears throat> and I didn't get to it until later in the day, but. Uh, to say that he was in rare form would be an understatement. Now, I get a lot of you are frustrated with Lindsey Graham because he's talking a big game, but he hasn't really done much. Uh, but now that things are on the Senate side of things, at least partially, when it comes to the Horowitz stuff, because uh, he was interviewing, uh, ex- not interviewing, but he was uh, chatting with Horowitz today at the Judiciary Committee. So it's it's been very interesting. I want to go and play for you the intro of Lindsey Graham. I'm not going to play the entire thing because Lindsey Graham spoke for over 40 minutes, which he doesn't do. So I wanted to go and just play the intro here just so you can kind of hear how it started. We'll play various other clips that are relevant, but just understand that there is a ton more meat in this entire 40 minutes that Lindsey Graham spoke in his opening statement. There's a lot there. We'll play you some pertinent points, uh, not the entire thing, obviously. But when you look for it later, maybe listen to the entire 40 minutes. You know, whether you're doing something uh, on your computer or something, just have it playing in in the background so you can kind of listen to it because he really does have a lot of very interesting things to say. And this is, again, one of those things that people just, there's so much about it that's out there that we've forgotten a lot, right? So rehashing this stuff the way that he has rehashed it, I think, are really, really good. So anyway, this is Lindsey Graham's opening statement. Um, This is just under two minutes where he just starts things off, and he talks about Crossfire Hurricane. I bet I haven't made 20 minutes of opening statements in a year, but I'm going to take a little bit longer uh, to try to lay out what I think is before us as a nation. Uh, Crossfire Hurricane was probably the best name ever given to an investigation in the history of investigations because I think that's what we wound up with a crossfire and a hurricane. Uh, There's been a lot of media reports about your report before it was issued. And I remember reading all these headlines, uh, lawful investigation with a few irregularities. Everything okay, low level people kind of got off track. If that's what you get out of this report, you clearly didn't read it. If that's your takeaway, that this thing was lawfully predicated, and that's the main point, you missed the entire report. How do you get a headline like that? That's what you want it to be. You want it to be that and nothing more. And I can assure you, if this had been a Democratic president going through what President Trump had gone through, that would not have been the headline. The headline would be, the FBI takes law into its own hands. Biased agents cut corners, lie to court, ignore exoneration. So the first thing I want you to know is how the cake is baked here. And my goal is to make sure that people, when this is over, whether you like Trump, hate Trump, don't care about Trump, you look at this as more than a few irregularities. And again, it's not irregularities, as we have been able to point out with documents and everything else that have been made public. It's clearly not irregularities. You had, as a summary, and somebody said, you know, we kind of checked out of this. Give me like a basic summary. As a basic summary, okay, Basically, the FBI was at one point in time notified that there may be an issue with the Russians trying to mess with the election uh, through the Trump campaign. They looked at it. They found no evidence whatsoever. Okay, they tried to get a FISA warrant, were denied. They went ahead and um, found exculpatory evidence. And so what they did after they got denied that original FISA warrant is they went back and they said, let's let's do this steel dossier thing. Let's go and look at the steel dossier and then we can do that. So instead of it being an investigation where somebody makes an accusation and the authorities look into it, nothing comes of it. They just back off and say, all right, there's nothing there. Come back when you have more evidence. Instead of doing that, the FBI persisted in trying to gather evidence. But they used the dossier, which they had already known was not credible. 
And then they lied to the courts about the dossier. They lied to the courts about witnesses in the dossier that they said they deemed credible. What they didn't tell the court was that those witnesses they deemed credible had said that what we told uh, Christopher Steele, none of what was in the Steele dossier, none of that was accurate. We didn't tell him that at all. So the witnesses that Steele cited said that Steele was lying in the dossier about what they said. And so the FBI believes that they were telling the truth, that Steele was lying, but they didn't support that. So they, what they did is they, they used wordplay to give themselves plausible deniability. They went back to the FISA court and they said that they found the witnesses to be credible. What they didn't tell the court was that the witnesses said the dossier was complete crap. And so they continue to manufacture evidence. That's the whole Yahoo News article and everything else. They continue to manufacture evidence to appease the court standards to get those FISA warrants. So that's what they continue to do. That's the, that's the main problem here. So then you've got James Comey, who, by the way, yesterday, James Comey went out last night and said that they canceled an appearance on Fox and Friends with him because they probably read Horowitz's report. So he was scheduled to be on at 8. They canceled it and everything else. Fox came back and said, not only was he not scheduled to come on, uh, we didn't. not only did we not cancel him, but he wasn't scheduled to even come on. So in that, in that interesting, and then Brett Baer, uh, Martha McCollum, several other Fox hosts said, you can come on our show. Uh, if, if there was some miscommunication on Fox and Friends, that's fine, but you can come on our show. Guess, guess what he didn't do? He didn't go on any of their shows. Brett Baer, the last thing you're going to accuse Brett Baer of is being friendly to President Trump. He's not. But Brett Baer is a pretty fair and honest guy. So this is another aspect of it. So you've got you got James Comey going out there and telling everybody that once again, he's been vindicated uh, with the Horowitz report. Quick reminder, since nobody else in the media nationally or internationally reminds you of this. We have declassified documents from the FISA court where they were admonishing the FBI under James Comey's leadership. Do you remember what for? Joe, remember? routinely and systematically violating the civil rights of American citizens by illegally surveilling them. They found hundreds of examples of it. They assumed there were thousands more, and that was under James Comey's leadership. Now, at the time, James Comey had been out, okay? He's gone. And his replacement, I don't remember if it was McCabe or Ray. I don't remember which one was in that room. I'd have to pull up the, uh, the information. But they promised the court that they would never do it again. That all of the stuff that happened under James Comey, who apparently gets sexually excited about running around and illegally wiretapping American citizens. That's what he did on a routine basis. So the idea that James Comey would never do it to a presidential candidate he didn't like is preposterous because he did it to everybody. So you've got his replacement out there promising the court they'll never do it again. And what did we find out uh, a month or two ago? They continued doing it thousands of more times after James Comey left. Okay, And the reason that I provide that context is you have to understand there is a culture in FBI leadership now that has been in place since at least Comey, probably going back to Mueller, because Mueller was a terrible director, that they will illegally surveil Americans, they will spy on Americans, they will lie to the FISA courts routinely in order to conduct whatever operation they feel they need to do. Now that is that is just the culture under James Comey, probably going back to his friend, Mueller. But Graham asked a question of Horowitz. He said, James Comey is out there telling everybody that your report vindicates him. Does it vindicate him? I think it's a great question. It's only 16 seconds. Here we go. Former FBI Director James Comey said this week that, that your report vindicates him. Is that a fair assessment of your report? Um, I, you know, I think the activities we found here don't vindicate anybody who touched this. Okay. Uh, uh, let's uh, run our former FBI. So basically what Horowitz is saying, yeah, no, no, nobody in the FBI who touched this, nobody in the DOJ who touched this, none of them are vindicated. None of them. So James Comey got smacked down again, Mr. Ethical, right? But it's important. I, I'm literally the only person in the country that I know of that has told you about this, that James Comey was admonished by the FISA court. The FBI under his leadership was admonished by the FISA court for routinely abusing the FISA court to illegally spy on American citizens.
routinely, not just political candidates, not just politicians, but routinely violating the rights of everyday Americans for various reasons. And we're going to get into this a little bit more because Graham basically scorched the earth today. We'll talk about all of this. And, of course, you want to react to it. 574-2595-953. That is 2595-953. We'll take your calls on it as well. We've got more coming up on 95.3 MNC.